the Biden administration's efforts to compel schools across the country to accept and enforce what conservatives say are progressive notions of gender, well, that took a massive loss at the Supreme Court recently. Now, the administration had made an emergency request to enforce the Education Department's new protocols, which might have required, for instance, schools to let biological males use female locker rooms if they identify that way. This is after a lower court had ruled against the department. Now, these rules, released in April, clarified that Title IX's ban on sex discrimination in schools also covered discrimination based on gender identity, sexual orientation, and pregnancy or related conditions, went into effect on August 1st, marking the first time the law stated the discrimination based on sex includes conduct related to a person's gender identity. Now, dozens of attorneys general all over the country sued over the rule, arguing that it would conflict with some of their state laws that block transgender students from participating in women's sports, for instance. Now, swimmer Riley Gaines, who's been outspoken on trans athletes' discourse, celebrated the decision on her podcast, Gaines for Girls, quoting, uh, she said, quote, not all Supreme Court justices know what a woman is, but today enough did, and that's a win worth celebrating. This is a win for women, free speech, the rule of law, and common sense onward. So it's a little bit technical what happened. Each new administration keeps releasing rules related to, so Title IX is a federal law that prohibits um, sex-based discrimination in education. It was originally intended to make sure that if there's a female, if there's a male sports team club at the school and there's comparative interest in there being a female one, school has to have a female one as well. You can't have male versus female discrimination. That started getting read in aggressive and new, expansive ways during the Obama administration, compelling a lot of uh, uh, speech and due process related protocols on university campuses with sexual misconduct. They decided that sexual misconduct was a component of sex-based discrimination, and there were a lot of policies related to that that I thought were quite suspect. Um, now the administration, the Biden administration, had said that Gender identity is a component of sex discrimination. And so under, an ex under the existing law, a law that was written 50 years ago, it is already illegal to, um, to, to deny to, for instance, transgender students, maybe, accommodations based under this law. Now, the attorneys general of a bunch of states said, well, wait, our state has a, a law, a rule, to stop, for instance, trans people's participation in spaces that we think should be reserved for biological women. And so we're not going to follow this rule. So there was a um, need for the court to weigh in. And a lower court said, ha had stopped the enforcement of the Title IX rules. Biden appealed to the Supreme Court to undo that stoppage. And the Supreme Court said, no, it has to be halted while the issue is adjudicated. So these rules are not in effect. Now, I would say that I don't think Title IX covers these instances at all. This is, again, this is a 50-year-old law. If you want to, Congress could make a new law saying that trans students ought to be protected in this way. It could be re responsive to public demand. I always think it's better, given the discomfort some people will have with having um, people with, uh, trans people in uh, a woman-only space, can't there be additional accommodations? I think it'd be better and result in less harassment all the way around in schools to just have more privacy in the locker rooms, the bathrooms, all those kinds of things. You could pass a law, but they're trying to do under the existing law something that is not meant at all to cover this to read into these protections. And I think that was wrong. Yeah, the Educational Amendments of 1972 is the piece of legislation where Title IX is a part of, and it pertains to discrimination in education altogether. The college that I went to for undergraduate studies, Wells College, is one of those schools where when colleges were initially founded in the United States, women were not deemed people who should go to college at all, really. But a lot of the Ivy Leagues established these women's colleges at Brown. We had Pembroke way back in the day. 
um, where women would go and learn about literature and how to become interesting wives, basically. At Cornell, it was Wells College, and it never joined in uh, with the main university. It stayed independent. It was all women till 2005. But that difference in course structure was pretty common in education. My mom, uh, I remember, would take classes in, uh, she made clogs in a woodworking class, and she learned how to take care of the home, whereas guys got to take, I don't know, more interesting mechanics classes or things of that nature. And so a big part of this was to sort of equalize that. Mm -hmm. And so is it, does it make sense that Title IX applies only to sports now? Yeah, because the other facets of our education system are pretty equal. Men and women are in the same classrooms in most public schools and universities. And so I, I think it's good that this exists. Does it extend to regulating the bathrooms and locker rooms? I think, you know, for Tennessee and Louisiana and all of these states that have passed these laws around who can use what bathroom, I think those laws at all are an infringement on privacy. The idea that there's some right or entitlement of the state to make laws segregating bathrooms based on gender, it's a little bit weird. Um, and so I don't really know how I feel about it. I think that it, it feels like an infringement on privacy to even ask kids what their gender is. It's a lot easier to say, you're a woman, you dress like a woman, you identify as a woman, use a woman's bathroom. But to make laws to try and control where people go because some girls in locker rooms grow up in households where they're told transgender people are weird and ungodly, it just feels uh, like ridiculous well, to me. I would mostly just let the schools work out whatever policy they think is best, but I mean, in terms of the sports team, look, if you, if you identify, if you're, um, if you're a biologically male and start presenting as a female, start wearing female clothing, and your gender identity is female, again, I don't have any problem with that, but you can't be on the girls' basketball team now if you've just suddenly started identifying as a female. I think it would be reasonable to not necessarily say you can compete against biological women. If the, if, I think it's fine for a school to have that policy. I think most people would agree with that. And this was the, the federal government, the Biden administration, was massively redefining a 50-year-old law, Title IX, to say that in that case, I don't know, it was going to be unclear whether you could actually deny someone, deny a person who had, again, who had not transitioned, not doing medical transition, but whose gender identity is now female from being on the women's sports team. Uh, because gender identity was being included under the sex discrimination. And that's where I think it gets that's not what a little this case bit was tricky. About. Yes, that is what this case No, this about. case was about, it was Tennessee and Louisiana, others joined in the lawsuit, and it was about them calling, uh, you know, any kind of harassment, specifically the creation of a hostile environment, right. uh, was a violation to employees and students' right to bodily autonomy. It didn't have much of anything to do with locker rooms no, no, no. or it the participation exactly the, in sports. Well, it's, I, again, it's theoretical, but these laws at the state level are governing exactly that kind of thing, and, and the view is those laws are now, would be illegal under federal, under Title IX, um, because it is being applied in this broad way under the new, uh, again, under, no one passed, the Biden, Democrats did not pass a new law saying now in these circumstances you would have to accommodate trans people in this way. They read into an existing law that has nothing to do with gender identity that they would have to handle it this way, which I think is bad. Again, this, is, this goes back to a theme we've covered many times on the show. I think rule by, by random bureaucrat in the federal government, by education department people, doesn't make a lot of sense. These are progressive ideologues trying to force their worldview on everyone. Congress could make a new law, and they, it'd be reflexive to public demand, and then you could have input on it, and then if, you know, if, if your member uh, uh, votes for it and you didn't like it, you could hold them accountable. Here we just have the education department willing this into existence and then getting slapped down in court, I think, very deservedly. There, this, this ruling and the Title IX application didn't have anything to do with the standards that schools make for timelines for transition, yes, how does. long you That's have exactly to be. What it's that is doing. not what this does. Yes, it is. No, this is not. Yeah. Uh, this has to do specifically with allowing uh, people who identify as female to enter girls' private spaces such as restrooms, locker rooms, and showers, to participate in girls' <clears throat> physical education classes, gym class. 
And so this idea that Title IX makes it so there's no standards for people transitioning when they can participate in competitive sports, it's not outlawing those standards. Well, okay, well, well, let's just stick with the example. I, look, there are going to be a lot of parents, maybe you don't feel this way, and that's fine, but there are going to be a lot of parents and some teachers and school professionals and pe people in red states who don't think that, again, a biologically male person who starts presenting as female or wearing female clothes should be automatically granted access to the women's locker rooms or restrooms or facilities of that nature. You can feel differently, and I would, I, I would resolve this mostly by leaving it to the school and having people voluntarily associate with whichever is the right environment that fits your values and the way you want your families, who you want people to be around. I don't, I'm not going to tell people how to run their school or their life broadly, but this was being told at the federal level that you could not deny that person in that circumstance, that a school that did that would be, it could not prevent that. And um, again, that was not, the, the Supreme Court has said, no, you can't just, just decide that. So, I think the interpretation of the Title IX law is that they cannot create a hostile environment in these schools through laws around gender and sex. So if someone transitions from male to female and a school in Louisiana forces them to be in the male locker room, that does create a hostile environment for that student. And so they need to create an alternative. And I think that's more reasonable than saying the issue is that biological males are trying to enter women's locker rooms. As a woman who's dealt with harassment from men my entire life, I am not at all worried about transgender women being the people who are perpetrating violence. And it's very rich to see a lot of conservative guys on social media who are oftentimes perpetrators of harassment against women suddenly realizing that men are a problem when they talk about biological males going into women's restrooms, not realizing that women who experience harassment are not getting harassed by transgender women. And so to me, it just feels misplaced and it, it feels like it's coming from people who think being transgender is weird and uh, not really thinking about the issue as it exists in the schools. Let us know what you think about this. More Rising in just a minute.